We're here today to talk about the increasingly fragmented experience that we're all having with the internet and the, the way that we interact with the internet. Um, what you see here is a few examples of some of the small personal devices that you can get uh, today. You know, the, this won't be the last time you see Google Glass on this screen, I'm sure. Uh, there's the, the Nest Home Controller, the Nike Fuel Band. These are all um, small, purpose-built devices that uh, record information with, and respond to our environment. So they respond to the environment, and they, the, the physical environment, and they respond to the social environment in which we live. Um, they, uh, they're all very purpose-built to do one simple task. And they're providing a flood of information about ourselves, about, about our habits and our, and our movements. And, uh, and these, it's a very intimate thing, but there's, there's another, I've been looking through this, you know, I found another even more intimate, uh, a more intimate device and activity that can provide a lot of information about ourselves. And that is, yes, uh, all those things have IP addresses, now your toilet can have an IP address. <laughs> And it seems frivolous and weird at first, you know, when I, when I saw this. But then when you think about it, the implications are really amazing, you know. Um, the, the, the most immediate thing is monitoring glucose levels in diabetics. Uh, but also early detection of cancer, uh, detection of pregnancy, and you can weigh yourself and monitor everything that's going on in your life. Um, so we have a very, uh, we have a, a technology landscape that's changing very quickly. And I think most of you are probably trying to come to grips with the idea of mobile. I think a lot of people came today because they want to understand what should their mobile strategy be, how do they develop apps, and, and we're certainly going to talk about that. I think that's, that, that is the present that we live in, um, how do we incorporate mobile into our businesses. Um, but we're seeing rapid uptake of these other things, and, and we really need to move beyond thinking about the mobile device as, a, as another device that we need to build an app for. It's causing big changes to the business. It's just, uh, you know, Kodak, the, the music business that Julian mentioned. It's very disruptive, and it's accelerating, too, this change. And it requires, we're going to talk about technology today, but we're also going, we also need to talk about what the organizational response is. Traditional organizations uh, and, and the way that they move applications and manage their enterprise architecture are going to have to change to adapt to this evolving world. And I, Another thing I want you to think about today is how can we stop being passive observers of all of this? How can we stop just consuming, you know, being victims of the trends as they come along, and how can we take control of it? And, you know, I, and I, like, I tell my kids, you know, don't be a passive observer of the Internet. Learn how to program. Learn how to take control of your own experience and define it for yourself. So I'm going to show some statistics now. Um, for those of you that have seen Horace's talk that's, uh, uh, that's coming up after mine, you realize how audacious it is for me to get up and show statistics before him. He'll, he will present much more accurate statistics in a much more entertaining way. But just quickly give you an idea of the trends. Um, this comes from a Cisco report. Granted, Cisco probably has a vested interest in inflating these numbers. Uh, but So we're off by 10 billion or something. Uh, it's, not, it's not really material. The, the fact is that it's the change that's coming and the change that's happened is huge, and it will only accelerate. So the, the, this much quoted number, 50 billion uh, connected devices on the internet by 2020. Uh, we've long passed the point where there are more devices than people on the internet, or people in the, more devices on the internet than people in the world. And we're looking at something like six by, tw by 2026 devices per person. Um, this is a description of the machine to machine, the forecast of the machine to machine data that's expected to be transferred over mobile networks uh, in the coming years. So, Right now, we're, there is some. So this is not phones talking to your home computer or something like that. This is devices out on the internet that are, that are autonomous and communicating with other devices that are autonomous. So with something around 20, 30 petabytes per month now of that kind of data, that's mostly industrial applications. Uh, but that's expected to grow to, to uh, you know, the number here is 563 petabytes of machine-to-machine -machine data transferred over the internet by 2020. And finally, the number of IPv6 mobile devices. So in order to, of course, to support this pr proliferation of 
devices, we need to we need a bigger internet address space. So this is mobile devices that with with internet addresses IPv6. Um, so th this is projected something like 4.2 billion. But the interesting thing about this is the pr the equivalent projection for phones and smart uh, tablet for smartphones and tablets is only about half that. It's about 2.2 billion. So that means that there's going to be by we can imagine in 2017 having something like two billion connected devices with an internet with an internet address um, talking to each other without people being involved. So what do we mean by the shattered future? Um, so increasingly, our interaction with the internet is going to be not with an app on a single device, but with the environment. This is just some of the, uh, this is just some of the things, you know, Kickstarter is, is awash with ideas, and it's hard for me to stop from buying all of them, you know, the little sensors you can tinker with and things. For a geek, that's, that's really great. Um, but the thing is that we have to stop, we need a mind shift. We need a, a mental shift to stop thinking about these things as little computers. This is not a whole bunch of little computers, each of which is gonna run an app and that we design an app specifically for. The whole thing is a computer. I'm gonna go back because that had, a, uh, the whole, th the, the, we are going from interacting with a single device to the device and the ambient environment around us being the computer. And the apps we develop have to run on all of these devices simultaneously. And they may be devices that you don't even know exist yet. So that's the challenge that we have. And we're going from thinking about a single device to thinking about the environment as being the computing environment. So there's ambient, so we can interact naturally without having to type on the screen and so on. So how, how, how does a business respond to that is the question we want to answer. Um, and it's not just mobile devices. I, that's what we talked about and the focus is on. But it's really a combination of forces. None of this would work if it wasn't for the cloud. And it's producing a flood of data and, and, and that, that we need to know how to understand and how best to use for our businesses. And, and it puts us within a social context that's increasingly interconnected and, and widespread. And I, I, it, we, we have old mental models about computers that we need to cast aside. I put this quote up here um, because I love this quote. Uh, David Glertner, his politics are dubious, he's, uh, so, so don't Google any of his political writings, okay? But, but he's, a incredible, he's a visionary. He's, a, he's, a, he's been for many years a, a visionary uh, as to how we will use the internet and, wh and what the internet will come and how we can interact with multiple things. So, and he makes a good point that it took us 20 years to, of managing scarce resources, computing, storage, all of those things, to learning how to squander them. We have to move our mindset from one of scarcity to one of abundance. And we have an abundance of, you know, when I see people managing virtual machines one at a time and doling them out as if they're precious resources, I just, I, I just throw up my hands and wonder because we don't have to work that way anymore. Virtual machines are a commodity that we can create and destroy as much as we want. So all of this, it, it requires a huge change in our mental model. So, it's not just devices, it's channels, and, and, but we're still really uncertain about this. We don't know which, should, which of these technologies do we put our money on, you know? Um, we don't know which ones users are gonna adopt. We don't know how to exploit them commercially. We don't know how to make money from them. And we, we also don't know which are gonna be winners. It was interesting, Julian talked about the progression of music, of recorded music and the way it's presented to consumers. And he left out the eight track tape. So how do we know the Google Glass, you know, isn't going to, or, or the Nest Home Controller isn't going to be the eight-track tape of all of that? So how do you respond as a business? It, it's, the change is inevitable, and the ch ch pace of change is inevitably accelerating. So how do we deal with that? Well, how does an explorer you operate without a map? When we're in unknown territory like this, we have to develop an organizational response that lets us learn as we go along. So what do you do? You take a step, or you take a small step, one that's not difficult to recover from. You look around, you assess, you determine if that was the right direction to go in, and then you take another step. And that's, that's what we have to do as businesses, rather than expecting that we're gonna have a map that somebody else has made for us that we can follow directly. 
So this model uh, we're going to talk about today, uh, and I think uh, Keith and John Ritchie are going to talk about that, this a lot, some more this afternoon, um, is one of exploration and scientific discovery. This is the model. This is the model you're all familiar with, and this is the one that we've been talking about for a long time, where we have a bunch of ideas and we prioritize those ideas and we move them through the pipeline. And along the way, we do you know this agile delivery stuff where we get feedback from end users and we get actual data from stakeholders and we apply engineering techniques to be agile and deliver those things in small pieces. And that's great. We want to keep doing that. But what do we do when this path isn't so straight? What do we do when we actually don't know what, we're go what direction we're going? When we don't actually know if the idea that we have is right to begin with? Well, we don't want to throw away all the stuff we know. So we want to continue to use that, that core of agile engineering in there and, and do feedback to stakeholders and feedback to end users. But we want to use a more scientific approach to the way that we come up with ideas. And so uh, this means uh, positing hypotheses and measuring the outcomes and, and then creating a new hypothesis from that. Um, we need to incorporate, through the end users, a multi-channel strategy. We want our experience with your business to be one that, that is consistent across all of these different channels and devices and which is part of the natural environment that we live in. Um, we need to collect data. We need to collect, uh, we need to collect precise data or, or actual numbers and, and uh, numerical data and, and feed that back into our process and derive insights from that. Um, and we need to do our development in such a way that we can throw things away when we need to. And that's something that's very hard for people to, to come to accept, you know, that sometimes you're going to do stuff, you're going to head in the wrong direction, and you're going to retrace your steps, and the overall goal is you're closer to it, but you've wasted a little bit of time in finding out. And we have to get more, a lot more comfortable with that. Uh, and finally, all this feeding back into the ideation process so we can change our strategy and change our ideas. And of course, you know, Lean Startup, you've, you, you're all familiar with that, I'm sure. And, and, and taking these ideas and bringing them into your organization. You can start small or you can grow it out to, to be an entire organization that learns. So the last thing I want to leave you with and the, la the um, challenge, I guess, I want to present to you and things to think about today is what is this? Uh, there's a lot of dystopian possibilities that we can imagine from this future of, of surrounded by devices and having all of our personal information out there on the internet. Um, if anybody has kids, they've seen scenes like this uh, and probably a lot of adults as well. But do we want a future where everybody is more absorbed in their electronic world than they are with the people around them? I don't think so. I don't think that's, that's not what I want. And we need to think about how we're going to shape this future to be something that's more connected. Um, and we need to think about the, the wider societal implications. So we, do we want Big Brother watching us? Do we want our every move, our every piece of personal data to be accessible and, and out there? And you know, what kind of limits do we want to put on that? And how do we safely handle people's personal data? Do we, but we want information that's beneficial to everybody to be free. We, want, we also want the freedom to share information and, and not suppress uh, the, these thoughts and ideas from coming out. There's a picture of Aaron Schwartz, a colleague of ours, who was harassed by the U.S. Uh, the Department of Justice. Um, and finally, the environmental impacts. Of, um, we love these low power devices. And we, everybody talks about how we, we have all these personal devices that are very low power, but it's powered by the cloud. None of those devices would exist if it wasn't for the huge data centers that are running and sucking up resources. So this is not without a cost to the environment as well. And we have to think about, you know, everything isn't free. It, it, these devices and data and virtual machines are free, but there's a hidden cost and we need to think about those hidden costs to the environment. So your challenge is to think about how we can use technology to connect people and not divide them. How do you honor those people, how do you honor those individuals and respect their privacy and respect the resources of the planet at the same time as we still turn a profit. So that, that's ultimately uh, what we're trying to do is make some money here as well. So let's, um, let's think about all of these things at the same time instead of individually. <laughs>